Hello, everyone, and welcome back to a podcast from um, electrophysiology, from clinical cardiac electrophysiology here at the Cleveland Clinic. As you know, I'm Osama Wazni. I'm the section head of the EP section, and with me today is Dr. Roy Chung, who is the director of physiologic pacing here uh, at the clinic. So, Dr. Chung, could you explain to us when does a patient need a pacemaker? So, we typically consider pacemaker therapy for patients who has a very low pulse rate. Uh, and physiologic pacing is important when you have a pu low pulse rate coming from the bottom chamber. You know, we have four chambers, two at the top and two at the bottom. And when you have very slow pulse that is not getting transmitted from the top to the bottom, then we will need to implant um, pacemaker leads one at the top and one at the bottom to keep your pulse rate and the reasonable amount, reasonable amount kind of number so that uh, you can function well. Good. So thanks. So the pacemaker is indicated basically when the impulses are too slow and the, a common one is when the impulses are actually present in the upper chamber, but they're not getting delivered or transmitted down to the main pumping chamber, which we call the ventricle. And that's when a pacemaker will help uh, restore that connection. Now, uh, traditionally, we've always put leads in the right ventricle so we can pace the right ventricle. And also later, that impulse gets to the left ventricle. But uh, we've learned that there are some uh, problems with that approach. Could you just expand on that, please? So in our experience and also what is available in our literature is that in a, about 20% uh, uh, of the time when your bottom chamber is uh, is paced all the time, um, they can develop congestive heart failure because this is not a normal way that the, the heart contracts. So these patients then will undergo what we call an upgrade where we put an additional wire uh, lead into the left ventricle and to have simultaneous kind of pumping of both chambers to avoid, you know, congestive heart failure. Yeah. So that's what we do traditionally. Yes. So so basically, just to summarize, is that when we do put a lead in the right ventricle and we give pacing, but the problem then happens is that now the right ventricle is being, or the lower right chamber, which is the main pumping chamber, is, is being activated or pumped sooner or earlier than the left ventricle. And that can cause heart failure in the long run. And to not mitigate it, actually, to fix that, what we usually do is we add a third wire uh, that will go into a structure called the coronary sinus and stimulate the left ventricle. But now, instead of doing that, there is a new technique of pacing called physiologic pacing that would avoid the development of heart failure in the first place and also would avoid the need for that third wire. Could you please explain to us the concept of physiologic pacing? So this is a relatively new technique uh, that, that kind of emerged over the last several years. All of us have um, natural kind of wiring, if you will. It's like broadband. We have the old telephone system and then we have broadband. And we are able now to put a lead tapping into your broadband services to really uh, engage your own kind of wiring into those chambers. So both chambers will um, pump together at, this, at the same time. And because of this, then we, we can avoid, you know, uh, future problems such as congestive heart failure, or worsening of your pump. So and, and also the need for putting a third wire. And the need for another procedure down the road. Exactly. Not many, I mean, one of the challenges is uh, these are newer techniques and it takes a little bit longer to learn and they can be very challenging. So therefore there are not many centers that are doing this, uh, but we've been very fortunate that we have had four years experience in this. And we look at all aspect of this and to, to see who are the candidates and who are not. So 
when they have questions, you know, they can contact us because we have a big we are a big group and we know who who can benefit and who can and then help help patients with this. Very good. So, uh, so now we've had four years of experience and um, have you noticed that it's made a difference and been helpful in these patients? In our own uh, population, uh, in our own kind of registry, if you will, none of our patients has presented uh, with heart failure following their implant, which is uh, tremendously encouraging uh, results. Um, I think it's, it's a very promising field um, that we are continuing to learn a lot from and continuing to kind of fine tune our technique and to share with uh, everyone here at, at the Cleveland Clinic. So I, I think this is uh, something that will stay. I don't think it's going to go away and I think it will only get better in the future. That is excellent. Uh, excellent. I mean, something that decreases hospitalization and heart failure by 20% because it was 20% and now it's 0% uh, is something that uh, is really very valuable and very important uh, for our patients. So thank you for leading this work and um, hopefully we will continue to get better when it becomes less of a challenge and less time consuming. So thank you very much uh, Dr. Chang and we hope to see you guys in another uh, podcast from Cleveland Clinic Electrophysiology. Thank you. All right, thank you.